Hello there, my name is Jack Edwards. See? And welcome to my exam season survival guide. That's right, exam season has reared its ugly head once more, and so I'm here today to tell you how we can all get through it together. So, today's video is in partnership with the amazing people over at Unite Students who have very kindly sponsored this video. <laughs> They provide fantastic student accommodation, but also have an amazing website, which is full of tips and tricks to help get you through your degree. There's also advice for people who aren't yet at university. So if you're doing your GCSEs or your A-levels, stay tuned, this applies to you too. The link for more information and resources on the Unite Students website will be down below uh, in my crotch, sorry. But for now, with this video, let's channel our inner destiny's child. I'm a survivor. I ain't gonna give up. So, tip number one is to start your week off right on a Saturday morning by doing Parkrun. Parkrun is this amazing organisation who host weekly races in pretty much every town and city in the UK and worldwide. It's a 5k race, but there's absolutely no pressure to do it in any possible time. All you need is a barcode, which you can sign up for on the website and you just print them off and then you can turn up and do it. I go with my running club and it's just the best way to start the week. It's a good way to clear your head. When you're doing that race, all you can think about is the race because you're like, I just want to finish. So I'm going to go do park run and I'll see you on the flip side. Oh hey, tip number two is to always have breakfast. Now I understand that not everyone wakes up feeling hungry, but it's not necessarily about filling your stomach, it's about the energy that the food gives you. So even if you just have a piece of toast with Nutella on it or some granola or some cereal, that is still good. So I'm gonna make some breakfast. So this is my go-to breakfast. I've got some Onkin yogurt, which is mango, papaya and passion fruit flavor, a banana from nature, I guess, and um, granola from Aldi. So my next tip is to start the day with an easy task, something that won't take very long, something that you can easily comprehend just to get you um, in the right frame of mind and start the flow of revision. It can be quite intense um, to start your day with something really heavy um, and difficult, so ease yourself in, you know? So today I am focusing on Shakespeare revisions, so I've got my anthology and I am going to read The Comedy of Errors, which um, could be my autobiography title. Okay, so I am taking a quick break from revision, and so tip number three. Okay, so this is quite clearly tip number four, but I can't count, and that's probably why I'm doing an English Lit degree. So tip number three is that when you do take a quick break, do something that is still productive, and most importantly, away from your phone. Just a small little task that won't take long, that has a definitive end point. Um, so for example, I'm going to do the washing up, because at one point, the washing up will be done. Do something that takes you physically away from the revision, but not mentally. So you're kind of doing something like a menial task that doesn't take up too much brain power. So you're still ticking away and thinking of things, forming connections, da da da. And it's also productive, ticking something else off your to-do list. When I'm at uni, I honestly miss the dishwasher just as much as I miss my own family. Anyway, back to revision. <laughs> Tip number five is to have a good revision playlist. I personally prefer to listen to lo-fi stuff with no lyrics, because otherwise the lyrics distract me. As always, I'm going to plug my own Optimal Focus playlist. Um, my username on Spotify is Jack Edwards, but I will leave the link down below if you want to check it out. <laughs> Number six is to focus on incremental gain rather than just focusing on huge insurmountable tasks. And by that, I mean, instead of making a to-do list full of huge tasks that you need to complete, break those down into smaller sections. So instead of saying, make notes on the textbook, put in your to-do list, make notes on page one to three, make notes on pages three to five, make notes on pages six to seven, you know, focus on that. You get to tick more things off, you feel more productive, and I think it's better for your brain to feel like you're actually achieving something. Similarly, if you are making a to-do list, include things like get up, make breakfast, have lunch, have dinner, and include relax on your to-do list because those things are so important too and it's still an achievement to have done them, okay? We're all working on ourselves this 2019. And that leads me smoothly on to tip number seven. This tip is to make a productivity tracker. So down here I have the dates, these two are April and then the rest are May. And then over here I have number of hours. Now the ideal number of hours I would say to work is eight. A wise Ibsmo once said that the perfect ratio is to do eight hours of work eight hours of sleep and eight hours of chill. I just wanted to quickly make it clear that eight hours is a personal target that I set for myself. Um, it's a very, very personal thing during study leave. Um, and if you want to aim for three hours or four hours or five hours or, you know, slowly build it up, then set that as your threshold amount and focus on that. So for each hour of work that you do, you fill in one of these slots and then um, you basically try and reach the threshold of work. If you don't reach it, 
and you do an extra bit the next day. And I think this helps build a kind of positive mindset where you feel like you're actually achieving something just by spending time doing work. Because sometimes, you know, if you're doing a big task, you're not always completing it or achieving something um, tangible. So to be able to say, you know what, yeah, I just did an extra hour of work or I just did an extra three hours of work. That is an achievement in itself, so celebrate it. Also, obviously, number of hours spent does not necessarily equate to success, but I think it's important to also celebrate when you do put in the hours. Wow, you know you did a terrible job when you have to add two disclaimers in the space of 30 seconds. Good job, Jack. And this was inspired by the lovely Lydia Violetta. The next tips that I wanted to talk about are to do with mental health because that is just as important as all of the practical kind of tips in this video, if not more important. We wouldn't dream of playing sport if our bodies weren't working properly, so why do we dream of pushing ourselves to do even more revision if our brains aren't? So the first tip is that if you're feeling quite stressed or anxious or like feeling very high pressure, there's a breathing activity that you can do using your hand. This was actually taught to me by a subscriber called Ollie, so shout out Ollie if you're watching. Basically, the premise of this is that you trace your finger up and down your hand. So as you go up your fingers, you breathe in. As you go down, you exhale. And this is a really good way of calming yourself down if you're in a high pressure situation, particularly in an exam. You're not going to distract anyone if you're just tracing your fingers on your desk. So take some time to yourself, focus on your breathing and calm down. It's gonna be okay. The next tip was something that my mum actually taught me and I swear by. So again, if things kind of bubble up and I start to panic a little bit, something that I find really useful is to go through the alphabet from A to Z and think of something that begins with each letter. So give yourself a category to start with, like animals, place names, towns, cities, anything like that. So go through the alphabet and really focus on each thing. So like A, Australia. B, Bulgaria, C, Cyprus, D, Denmark, E, England. You get the point. And it's kind of an easy task. It doesn't take your brain too far away from what you're doing, but there will be some letters that you really have to think about. And it's good to just take a moment to step back and reevaluate. So I don't know, I think it's very easy to be like, just take a sec and calm down, like it's gonna be fine. But those things are actually practical tips that you can use to focus on yourself for a sec. And I hope they work. So look after yourself please. So I'm taking my own advice and doing some tasks that are away from revision, but are not near my phone. I don't know why I forgot how to speak then. So because we have to treat ourselves like actual children, we have a tick list of chores. This week I am on general tidy, so this room needs a sort out. Okay, I'm done and the room is looking so much tidier. The enthusiasm. <laughs> it's literally the most disgusting bathroom I've ever seen. Yeah, our shower's not doing so good. Oh no. Oh, even the shower's given up on us. It's fine. <laughs> and now I am heading back to my room for another hour and 15 minutes of revision before dinner. Food is my motivator. <laughs> I have completely lost count, but the next tip is to focus on the fine art of active relaxation. This is time you schedule in to just chill, and sometimes that time is more important than an extra hour of work. So I'm going to go downstairs, make some dinner, chill with my housemates, and just relax, and not think about work for a little bit. I own a chain now, guys, like who do I actually think I am? Maybe it's a chain reaction. Okay, so we are back in the kitchen. And so this tip is that when you make dinner, make something that you can have again to save yourself from having to cook in the future. My plan is to make a chicken and spinach pasta with a tomato sauce because I can just basically cook that in bulk now and have it for lunch and dinner tomorrow as well. Because tomorrow I'm planning to be in the library all day so I won't really have time to cook for myself and so I think it's a good idea to pre-make it. So that's what I'm gonna do. I have got a big old pan full of chicken, spinach, tomato sauce, and um, some cheese in there as well. And then in here we have the pasta. I'm bored of waiting for this to cook. This is actually what people who wear bucket hats look like. <laughs> I'm going to be eating pasta in the pasta present and the future. I'm actually gonna eat it out of the pan right now because um, I'm an animal. Yeah. We love a student YouTuber. I bet this is what Zoella does. So I've had dinner, tidied the kitchen, and now I'm going to head off to the library. So as a final kind of tip, I think that it's a really good idea to switch up your study spaces and also find places that you know you will work. There's something about going to the library for me that means I will just get work done. I think it's the act of actually having to walk there and knowing that you're only there for a set amount of time. I think it's a much more conducive place to work. So that is what I'm going to do now. I'm going to head to my college where there's a library and a study room and pick one of those and revise in it. Some 
notes on Shakespeare's critical history. I think everyone else in this study room has gone home now, but when we first arrived, there were two people just very loudly discussing the best recipe for making halloumi pasta, which I've never heard of before. And I was hooked, let me tell you. So I was pretending to make notes on the comedy of errors, but actually, I was writing down the halloumi pasta recipe and I've secured it. This is the halloumi pasta recipe that I've written down. Very productive session. Okay, I'm a stressed and sleep deprived student. <laughs> Get me out of here. So, it's the next day. I forgot to end the vlog last night, but thank you so, so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. An extra special thank you to Unite Students for sponsoring this video. I really, really appreciate it. And they have so many useful tips on their website and on their YouTube channel, which I just discovered. It's got so many recipes and tips and bits of advice and tricks and... Listen, I'm gonna be binge watching it, so I hope you are too. This was my exam survival guide. If you are doing exams this year, good luck. I believe in you, you can do it. This is the final push now, and in the words of a great philosopher, we're all in this together. If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe for more and give it a thumbs up if you like. But for now, I've been Jack Edwards. Thank you so much for watching this video. Good luck in your exams, and I'll see you very soon. Bye-bye.